The book we are reading today is Classic Starts Pinocchio, retold from the Carlo Collodi original by Tanya Zamorski. Chapter 15 and 16. Chapter 15, Pinocchio gets sold to the circus. Who is it? The boys turned donkeys brayed politely. It is the driver of the wagon that brought you here. Open this door or I'll kick it in. He seemed to understand their strange new language, and without even giving them a chance to open the door, kick it in he did. Hello, boys, the round man said, still smiling. He didn't seem surprised at all. Or should I say donkeys? Putting bridles on them both, he started to pull them out the door. Where are we going? Lampwick tried to say, or Bray. The driver was taking the boys to market, and not to buy them some lovely snacks, either. No, he told them, he was taking them there to sell them. It turned out that the driver of the wagon had another profession, that of donkey dealer. He went around the world looking for lazy boys, those who ran away from home and from school and were therefore destined to become donkeys. He made quite a good living at this. There were, it seemed, many such boys around. At the market, Lampwick was bought by a farmer, and Pinocchio went to the owner of a circus, known to be a mean and greedy man. The next morning, Pinocchio's new job began. The circus owner was determined to teach his new donkey how to jump and bow, dance a waltz and a polka, and even stand on his head. Oh, how the crowds would laugh! How rich the circus owner would become! Pinocchio worked very hard and finally mastered all of the tricks. The circus could open at last. The circus owner went around town and posted signs announcing the first public appearance of the famous dancing donkey called Pinocchio. As you might imagine, that night the stands were filled to overflowing. Everyone wanted to see the dancing donkey. Standing in the center of the ring, the circus owner cleared his throat and lifted up his microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, boys and girls, you are in for a wonderful night, for soon you shall meet the world-famous donkey of the dance. The audience clapped politely. I found this donkey in the wilds of Africa, the circus owner continued, and what a savage, violent beast he was. It took all of my will to tame him, but tame him I did. And now I present to you Pinocchio. This was Pinocchio's cue to enter the ring. Upon spotting him, the audience erupted in applause. Oh, what a dolled-up donkey he was! The circus owner had dressed him with a new bridle of shining leather and polished brass buckles. Pretty flowers and ribbons decorated his braided mane and tail, and a great sash of gold and silver were fastened around his waist. The circus owner gave Pinocchio the signal, and Pinocchio began to perform. He knew the drills. First, he had to walk around the ring. Then, at the sound of the owner's whistle, he was to change to a trot. The trot was then to be followed by a gallop, and then finally a full-speed run. All of a sudden, the owner raised his arm and shot a pistol into the air. The audience gasped. Some people even screamed, especially when they saw that the famous dancing donkey had fallen down as if dead. They needn't have worried, though. Playing dead was just another one of the famous donkey's tricks. At the owner's signal, the donkey leaped back to his feet and took a bow. When he raised his head, Pinocchio saw a beautiful woman in the stands. Around her neck, she wore a medallion with a picture of a puppet painted on it. The picture was of him, Pinocchio realized, and the woman was fairy. Fairy, he tried to cry out, but because he was a donkey, the word came out as a horrible honking bray. The audience laughed, and Pinocchio looked down in shame. When he lifted his head again, Fairy was gone. The circus owner cracked his whip, and Pinocchio knew it was time to jump through some hoops. Although he had practiced several times, he was so sad about Fairy that he didn't feel like jumping. Instead, each time he came near the hoop, he decided to go under it instead. The circus owner screamed at him. Pinocchio tried to jump through the next hoop, but he was so distracted that he tripped and fell. He hurt his leg and limped to the side of the ring. The show, it seemed, was over. The doctor was called to examine Pinocchio, and he declared that the donkey would be lame for the rest of his life. Who, why would I want such a lame donkey? the owner asked angrily. The next day, the owner came to Pinocchio's stall, put a bridle around his neck, and roughly pulled him out. I'm taking this useless beast to the market to sell it, the owner muttered to himself and pulled the donkey forward. Not if I have anything to say about it, Pinocchio brayed stubbornly. After all, what if his next owner turned out to be even meaner than the circus owner? Pinocchio quickly pulled away from the circus owner, and even though his legs still hurt, ran like lightning. Chapter 16. Pinocchio Meets the Shark Pinocchio ran so fast that upon reaching a cliff next to the sea, he couldn't stop. He plunged right over the edge. He inhaled a great deal of water and thought he would drown, and perhaps he would have had a thousand fish not suddenly surrounded him, sent, they said, by fairy. The fish began to nibble on his ears, his nose, his neck, and his mane. One fish even did him the great favor of eating his hairy tail. 
When the fish were done eating all the meat, they came to the bones, or rather, in Pinocchio's case, to the wood that the puppet was made of. But it was very hard wood, the kind that gave fish indigestion, so they swam away and the puppet was saved. Pinocchio was a light and bouncy puppet once more, and he turned and started to swim out to sea. Soon he spotted a large white rock in the middle of the sea. On the rock stood a little blue goat, bleeding and beckoning to the puppet. Something about the goat seemed familiar. It was her blue hair, Pinocchio realized. It reminded him of fairies. Kicking his legs even harder, he speed swam toward the rock to greet her. Just then, however, a horrible sea monster with a huge head lunged out of the water in front of him. Do you know what it was? None other than the enormous shark that had already been mentioned in this story. Look out, bleated the little blue goat, and Pinocchio tried to look out. He swam and kicked as hard as he could, but it was no use. The monster opened its mouth and Pinocchio disappeared into it. Pinocchio found himself resting on the shark's tongue in between three rows of gleaming white teeth. A second later, however, and without even chewing him first, the shark swallowed the tiny puppet as easily as if he was a pill. He sucked Pinocchio down deep into his stomach with one satisfied gulp. Pinocchio must have fainted from fear or hit his hard wooden head during the fall. When he awoke, he could not remember where he was. It was pitch black in the shark's stomach. Once in a while, a cold breeze blew. Some time later, Pinocchio remembered what had happened and realized the breeze was from the shark breathing. The poor shark was suffering from asthma, so it was some breeze. Pinocchio burst into tears. Help, help, he cried. Oh, poor me. Won't someone come to save me? And who do you think will hear and help you in here? Asked a rough, gravelly voice beside Pinocchio. Who's there? Pinocchio whispered. It turned out the voice belonged to a poor tunny fish, which had also been swallowed by the shark. "'What kind of fish are you?' the tunny fish asked. "'What are we going to do?' Pinocchio replied, ignoring the question. "'Wait until the shark has digested us both, I suppose,' said the tunny fish in a resigned voice. "'But I don't want to be digested,' shouted Pinocchio, starting to sob. "'Well, neither do I,' said the tunny. "'But I suppose dying this way is more dignified than being fried up in a pan.' Pinocchio guessed that the tunny was right, and he was certainly grateful he was no longer covered in flour. But unlike the tunny, he refused to give up so easily.' Just then, about a mile in the distance, Pinocchio thought he saw a faint light. Thinking he might find some other poor swallowed soul, possibly a wise old fish who might know how to escape, Pinocchio vowed to reach the light. Come with me, Pinocchio suggested. No, the tunny fish sighed. I'm too scared to try. Good luck and goodbye. And that concludes chapter 15 and 16. We hope you are enjoying our chapter a week story. Call again every week for a new chapter.